Buonasera, signore, buonasera. Come bello stare a Napoli e sognare. Quante volte ho sussurrato, amore, ti amo. Buonasera, signore, kiss me good night. Buonasera, signore, kiss me good night. Buonasera, Charles. Buonasera, Lena. Buonasera. Charles, is it a great day? It is a great day. I look forward to our, our, our meetings and our show. And, uh, you know, I've been on the road and it's great just the people that I'm meeting here. <laughs> Italians have so much influence. You can see I'm a tourist today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charles. I'm happy to see you. I've missed you. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we're going to do a special show today. Today is our Mother's Day, our Mother's Day show. How special is because we think of mothers and in, in Italians, it's also Nana, the grandmother has a big influence as well. So it's yes. great that we honor our mothers and our grandmothers and our godmothers too. Yes. So we want to say Buona Festa della Mamma. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> which brings me to my background, which is a CC. But the reason I have this up today is because there's a little borough uh, called Tor, Tor de Beto, uh, where a, a parish priest, Don Otello Migliosi, is the one who started Mother's Day on the second Sunday of May in 1957. And um, in memory of this, in 1970, he created a mother's park, which is Parco della Mamma. And it's around a bronze statue depicting motherhood, a work of the sculptor Enrico Manfrini. And it was initially, Mother's Day was fixed on May 8th, but in later years, it came to be celebrated on the second Sunday in May, as many other countries in the world. So I thought that was really interesting. That is amazing. You know, it really is. I, we have to put that on our list of places to see the statue there and just how, how beautiful. Yeah, really beautiful. And hey, Mother's Day, Italian. <laughs> like as you're saying this, I'm like, oh man, our friends are not going to believe it when we come back to them and say Mother's Day, Italian. <laughs> well, you know, you've become known as the guy who finds Italian history in every single thing, Charles. So <laughs> I, you're in the, standing in the middle of route, route 66 right now. Tell us what you have found that is Italian about Route 66. Route 66 and the part that we love about Route 66, that iconic era of, of the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, it's Italian. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, Lena. <laughs> it is Italian. And I'm just going to start at the beginning. It starts in Chicago, and it actually starts at the park there on the lake, which is actually the street is Columbus Boulevard and Balboa Drive, where the two aviators, you know, you have Columbus and Balboa was a great aviator that flew into Lake Erie for the, the exposition, which was called the Columbian Exposition. So it starts in Chicago. You're going down the road a little bit and you're, you got to St. Louis, which you have a big Italian uh, setup going there. A little bit outside of, um, of St. Louis is the Rosati winery which those italians came up from new orleans into arkansas and then they go to missouri and they create a winery and when prohibition came they started making jams and then when world war ii started welches came to them to supply the jams to the troops in europe wow so, so that's part of route 66 the italians you keep on going and, and i do want to interact it it's also called the mother road so on mother's day it's great that we're talking about route 66 the mother perfect road. Perfect, perfect charles <laughs> and there's a statue in, in Arizona, the Madonna of the road with beautiful statue honoring the women of the, of the road, which are, are really, it, it took a family to get through this. But as you keep on going, I found in uh, Seligman, Arizona, which is where the movie Cars is really kind of based on, there's a, a motel there, I'm interviewing the owners, they've got a poster and the, the celebrities in 1957, the singers, is going to see Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, R Little Richard. I'm thinking all those guys recorded and got started at Cosmo Matassa's studio in New Orleans on Rampart Street. <laughs> so Cosmo made these guys famous to go on into Los Angeles and, and, and sing. And that's Route 66. And then I'm staying at the Blue Swallow Inn on Route 66, that's why I'm in this shirt, and they're playing your dad's music in the courtyard. 
Of course they are, Charles, because Route 66 is Italian. It is Italian, and it actually ends in Little Italy and Los Angeles, which we'll talk Perfect. about later. Perfect. Perfect. So it starts with Italians, it ends with Italians, Italians in the middle, Italians in Vegas, Italians helping everybody else become famous on Route 66. Bravo, Charles. I knew you could do it. <laughs> I need a marker here that thanks the Italians for Route 66. Absolutely. <laughs> So, Charles, I haven't checked this out today. You know, um, looking for Mother's Day gifts. You know, it's difficult to buy uh, an Italian mom a gift because they have everything. They have every cooking thing and everything. So, yeah, you know, take your mom out for a special dinner or cook for her or something. But I thought this was a unique gift that you could get a mom and it's it's a t-shirt it's by hardcoreitalians.com it looks like gucci but it says gnocchi <laughs> i'm gonna get one because i think it's awesome so i that's my suggestion today for check this out a unique mother's day gift lena i love i think every week i need to be buying the gift you feature because you've got some great items and this fits perfect for mother's day absolutely so, Charles, it's time for a Charles Celebrates Culture, and give it to us, Charles, today. All right. Like I said, I, I actually been on Route 66 now for three weeks, and I ended up in Santa, headed for Santa Monica, but it, I stopped in Little Italy in Los Angeles, and there is a Little Italy. There's an Italian hall, and a woman there named Mariana Gatto, who's come to New Orleans, and her great-grandparents came to New Orleans in the 1890s before going to L.A. They're part of that Contessa Antolina group, and it's a very large group of New Orleanians, Sicilians, from New Orleans in L.A., and Mariana gave us a great interview. She knows her Italian history so strong. And I, I had a great time interviewing her about what that museum's about. I actually did a voiceover for the museum app uh, where I'm describing Lady Gaga's uh, silk robe uh, made by Donatella Versace. I, I was actually thrilled to see your connection to the museum when I got there. And you're right, the Lady Gaga exhibit is great. Basil Russo. Uh, the, the, the father of the Russo brothers there. Captain American Shield is there. And I think you were involved with that as well. Yep, I, did, I got to describe that and um, also Hanna-Barbera. So I, there was a definite, definite connection for me. I love the, the Marvel movies and Captain America and the Russo brothers. And so it was really a thrill for me to be able to um, lend my voice to the app for that. But there's so much that women contribute and the museum showcases that role. And Mariana does a great job with, with the museum. And we're looking at some of those exhibits, the way she's laid them out, being able to bring them to New Orleans and, and travel with them in the future. Oh, that's a great idea, Charles. That's, that's great. I would love to see that happen. And we're here at the Italian American Museum in Los Angeles and with Mariana Gatto, who is the director of the museum. Mariana, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Mother's Day is coming up. Yes, it is. And we're actually in an exhibit that isn't a, it's about Culture. Culture. But if you look at it, the women drive this. The sash that you see is from the Club Femminile Italiano, which is the Italian women's club, which was founded here in Los Angeles in the 1920s. And it was really kind of like a who's who of Italian-American women. Its members included a woman by the name of Angela Crocetti, whose son you might have heard of, he went by the name of Dean Martin. And for their luncheons in the you know, 40s and 50s, Angela would often recruit her son and his friend, whose name was Frank Sinatra, to entertain. And it was really just such a great organization. You know, in addition to the social aspect, they raised money for local schools and libraries, for orphans in Italy, and for just a host of charitable causes. The, the club still exists. I'm actually a member, and uh, if there's any Italian-American women who would like to join. Right, we're based out of New Orleans, 
Right here in Los Angeles, you've got a, a big display here, Progresso. Progresso, yes. Yeah. So, you know, found a company founded in New Orleans, but because the growing season in California is much longer, the, the company established a Southern California subsidiary in the 1920s. So a lot of what was canned Progresso was actually grown here in Southern California and then sent across the nation, of course. Yep. And did you know that Progresso soup, Progresso canned ready-to-eat soup, actually predated Campbell's. So they were the first canned ready-to-eat soup in the United States. So as, as we know, you know, women were an integral part of the home front during World War II. You saw uh, many women go to work in the nation's factories. There was one Italian-American woman in particular by the name of Rosa Bonavita, who was working in New York and she and her cousin, Jenny Fiorito, actually set a record for installing over 3,000 rivets in an Avenger bomber during the early days of the war, and they were recognized by the president. So Rosa Bonavita was actually one of the inspirations behind the term Rosie the Riveter. Um, you know, many women were Rosies in the United States, but if you notice Rosie here, Rosie Bonavita, resembles kind of the iconic image that we're familiar with of the We Can Do It poster that came to symbolize, you know, women's contributions to the war effort. You're moving around the museum. Mm -hmm. Now we have Italians in their entertainment. What do we got here? This belongs to one of my favorite Italian-American women who was born Stephanie Germanotta, uh, best known as Lady Gaga. This was a, a, a gown or a robe that she wore as part of the Born This Way tour. It was designed by another fantastic Italian woman, Donatella Versace. It's pure silk, custom made, just an absolutely gorgeous robe. I wouldn't mind wearing it, but that's why we have it behind glass. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. You have a lovely son. Thank you. Yeah. He's a good boy. <laughs> He's a good boy. He's got a great mom. He's 27 years old, but he's still my good boy. You know? <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more celebration. Culture. Celebrating Culture is brought to you by Awe News. Awe News also produces New Orleans Insider Tours, which are 10 self-guided tours of New Orleans and Louisiana. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode and you're ready to really experience Louisiana. Charles, thank you for making Route 66 Italian and finding all the Italian for us. This is so exciting. It's been, it's been great. I really recommend anybody doing this and I can, get, we will make an Italian version of Route 66. And also Easy Rider does end in New Orleans. So there's that also that Easy Rider connection uh, that you see he traveled Route 66 and then heads off into New Orleans, Marganza, which is where my great grandmother settled. He goes through Marganza, Franklin, and then New Orleans. Awesome, Charles. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So for uh, our La Musica segment today, um, we are featuring a very talented uh, lady who is a mom, and I'm a big fan of hers. Um, back in the early 90s, she had a, a hit song called On the Way Up, and I had just gotten fired from my own rock band for being a girl. They didn't think they could make it with a girl, and I was so bummed out, and this song was like an anthem to me, and I'm a big fan of hers. Um, she is originally from Philadelphia. She's had an incredible career starting at a very young age. She won Star Search. She's performed on Broadway in musicals and she topped the Billboard charts. Her videos have been on MTV. She's appeared multiple times on the Arsenio Hall show and she toured the world with Prince. She lives in Las Vegas now where she balances a music career, a real estate career and being a mom. She just got engaged. She just bought a new home and is moving into it right now but she agreed to talk to us do a quick little interview and then we'll see a little montage of her performing throughout her career and her name is elisa fiorillo beautiful buonasera elisa fiorillo hey buonasera <laughs> I am a big fan of yours. And when you came out with On the Way Up and you being Italian and beautiful and you were dancing and singing in that song was like an anthem to me. Like, you know, it was like inspiring for me as a struggling singer. And, and so I, I'm, I'm like all starstruck right now. <laughs> Aww. You know, I've had that said to me a couple of times from different fans, how it helped them through life or through situations. And so... 
it's always good when you write a lyric that actually helps people, you know? Yeah. You never know how much your music's going to affect somebody. Absolutely, awesome. which is the importance of songwriting. So thank you for being so awesome and being a songwriter. Ah, thank you. I enjoy doing it. Uh, not only are you a songwriter, you're a singer, a dancer, a musician. You've even directed TV series. And oh, yeah. now <laughs> you have a real estate career as well as your singing career. And you're also a mom raising yeah. a beautiful and talented daughter. Tell us about how you balance all that. And I'm just tired hearing you say all that. <laughs> I just so want to go to sleep us. right now. Um, it all just kind of fell into my lap at different times in my life. It's like my priorities kind of went from it being an, me being an artist and having it all about me to me not having the opportunities that I had that I once had so I had to find something else that was creative. I ended up directing and doing voiceover work and doing all that and then I got my real estate license when my daughter was born. I, I wanted to have something so when I was home I could actually work and make money because as you know musicians don't always get paid the best as they should. <laughs> they work four hours for a hundred dollars sometimes and you know that just doesn't pay the bills. And so I don't know why, but my friends would always contact me to help them find apartments. And I remember just driving around Laurel Canyon, like writing down numbers, calling people, you know. I'm like, I must have, this must have been like something that I always wanted to do because I really like helping people find homes. And then being a mom is such a full time job. Uh, and she's a singer, actress, dancer. She's getting ready to go to LVA, which is the amazing school out here. <laughs> let's talk about your family. You live in Las Vegas now, but you're, you're from Pennsylvania. And let's talk about your family heritage. So my mom was Irish and German and Cherokee Indian. Uh, my dad's family were all Italian. Um, my grandmother was from Calabria. My grandfather was from Naples. And they spoke Italian. My dad did not in our house, which was frustrating for me because I always wanted to learn. Um, a lot of his family, I think, came over on the boat and lived in New Jersey mostly, and then somehow ended up in Philadelphia. And, you know, we'd have our Sunday dinners with the sauce and, well, I, I called it sauce. Everyone else called it gravy. It's the long fight between yeah. the gravy and the sauce thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a little red wine and, you know, thought that was the coolest thing ever. Yep. <laughs> so your dad, we have that in common. Both of our fathers were musicians. So tell, tell yeah. me about your dad. So my dad, I guess he saw a movie on Franz Liszt when he was a little boy at a theater. A song to remember. I think that's what it was. And after that movie, he said, I want to be a pianist. By 12 years old, the guy was like a virtuoso. Wow. I mean, played with the Philadelphia Orchestra when he was 12. He was a maestro. I mean, he went to Russia and he did master classes and he continued doing that till he, till he retired when he was about 69 or actually 70. Oh, and wow. That's wonderful. Did you study or were you just naturally a talented singer and just started singing? Basically, it was me, a record player, and my grandma. Wow. My dad's mom. Yep. Your she grandma. would come and she would sit for hours and we would record ourselves singing harmonies to, oh. you know, Barbara Streisand songs and Diana Ross. And so she would just sit with me for hours singing and she would make cassette tapes of me singing. We actually made a tape where we sang in harmony. We, we, were, we would make up songs and just sing back and forth to each other. So I think I started kind of getting a vibe to want to write, you know, when even being around her. And she was so confident and so she, she just pushed me and, wow. and believed in me so much that I, I felt like, like Streisand in the room because she just kept saying how great I was, you know? And it was wow. like, that was where I got it. Not yeah. from my mom, not from my dad. It was my grandma. So you were here in New Orleans. I got to see you when you were here. You were here for Essence Festival which is yes. a big thing here in New Orleans. And you had been traveling a uh, world tour with Prince at the time. And he was performing here, which was just, you know, New Orleans as the rest of the world loves Prince. So mm -hmm. uh, you got to perform here in New Orleans. And did you have a great time here while you were Oh here? my God, it was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I remember walking into a little gift shop and seeing a t-shirt that had like Janelle Monet and Prince on it and like all these artists. And I was like, 
going like I'm buying a t-shirt <laughs> or two or three and yeah. taking it home because just knowing that I was a part of that was yeah. such, a, such a treat. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about Italian traditions that you keep it now and, and are going to pass down to your own daughter that, you know, come, come from your family. One of the things, I mean, for sure, my Anna Nets Pizzels, every Christmas we sit and we make them and they take a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and they have to be just right, you know, and it, I have, I have the waffle iron that's like the stainless one, not the new ones that make them too thick. Right. So I'm very picky about my pizzelles because my Aunt Annette taught me well. Do you do Sunday, family Sunday dinners? You know, any? I want to. I just bought a new home. And yeah. I, I said to my fiance, because I just got engaged. Yes. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, That's so awesome. <laughs> and he has five kids and I have one. And so I've always wanted a big family. I always wanted to have big parties yeah. and big dinners. And um, so, yeah, that's the plan, but it's hard when everybody's working and yeah. schedules, but we're yeah. trying, we're trying that's to like good. at least get one Sunday a month in there. Have you recorded any Italian music or thought about doing that? Yeah. My, my dad always wanted me to be an opera singer. You should do it because I think it would be absolutely stunning to hear your voice singing Italian songs. And of course, let us know, cause we will super promote so okay. many Italians here in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. We I need your voice that. on some Italian songs. Thank you so much for letting me feature you on La Musica today. Um, we want to wish you a happy Mother's Day and tell you what an amazing woman you are. And you're Aww. an inspiration to all women, not just Italian Americans, and mm -hmm. to moms. So mm -hmm. grazie, Elisa. Grazie, prego, prego. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, grab the day the circus came to town And she didn't mind the raids just passing by her At the age of 15, she won Star Search and a recording contract. Now she's 21 and she's hit the charts recently with a song she co-wrote along with Prince. Ooh. <laughs> Performing on the way up from her album, I Am, this is Elisa Fiorillo. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Elisa Fiorillo. Go fast and ain't rhythm. What a mess 
you're making The neighbors want to know why you're always shaking oh, How I long to be the girl I used to be Fascinating rhythm, you got me on the go Fascinating rhythm, you got me on the go Fascinating rhythm I am such a fan of hers and she's so amazing the way she balances that busy life of hers. It was wonderful and what a great life story she has from age 15 and then writing her own music, coming to New Orleans and singing and just she's had a great career and then she's making the transition from, from 15 year old to mom, you know? Yeah, she's a great mom. Her daughter's really talented. I loved the connection with her grandmother. That, that's so special. I, I loved that. And, and I, one of the things I always think about, you talk about your grandmother as well. So I, I know our grandmothers that play a special role in our lives. And it was great that she went back and, and talked about her grandmother. Absolutely. Um, she has um, a website, which is elisafiorello.com. And you can just Google her. She's got so much out there. It's just really fun to watch all of her videos of her amazing performances. And we want to thank her so much for taking the time to talk to us today. It was great. And Lena, you're bringing so many people to the show. At some point, they all need to come to New Orleans for like a big concert. <laughs> that would be fun. A big Italian concert. It would be wonderful. <laughs> well, Charles, I had a great time today. It is so great to see you. I had a great time as well. I'm, I'm, and I think I told you that they're playing Louis Prima at this hotel right now. And it's just great. Bonacera is being played and we're doing Bonacera. <laughs> that makes me so happy, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon and another great show and everybody a great mother's day yes happy mother's day out there and thank you so much for watching everybody ciao mm -hmm. ciao 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 quando eu vou teu sussurato amor te amo bona sera signore kiss me good night Our New Orleans Insider Tour app features a statue stories and spirits tour. There are over 150 markers that all have a little story. Download our tour to make your stay in New Orleans extra special.